In this video, I'm going to go over a question that I had a few people ask me, and that is, how do you measure main safely on a benchtop oscilloscope? And it's a good question. That's why I figure I'll go and do a video of it. Now, note, you do not want to use this ground and, of course, your signal to measure the mains because what will effectively happen is, if you're in the U.S., you know how you got a neutral and you got a live, and on in the U.K., they got a split phase system where you have an L1, L2, and if you connect this ground to one of the lives, you'll effectively create a dead short because the oscilloscope itself is referenced to ground. So effectively, you're grounding out the live, and you, of course, blow the ground plane on your scope, which I have seen people actually do. And then number two, you end up probably burning up the probe itself it'll get really hot possibly catch fire or have an arc blast and stuff and not nice pleasant you can end up potentially killing yourself so don't do that the other method that a lot of people will do is they'll effectively remove the ground pin off the power cable the oscilloscope so effectively not making this reference to ground making it isolated and they'll try to do the measurement that way and that's not a method that I do recommend. I do not recommend at all because if you're under 120, let's say, you know, you can have like an older oscilloscope where they have the metal chassis. And if you happen to have it wrong, you know, you can make the metal chassis itself live. And if you touch that, of course, you can electrocute yourself. That's the first thing. Now, if you know what you're doing, do it at your own risk. Number two is, of course, if you're on a split phase system, you still can potentially damage the front end of your scope and stuff like that. So don't do those methods unless you know absolutely what you're doing. Now, the safest way to do it if you don't have a different active differential probe or have a truly isolated oscilloscope, if you're in the UK, you need two probes. And you have to remove these grounds right here to be able to effectively take that measurement and then you have to do math in the oscilloscopes and most oscilloscopes have a math function so you're effectively making a dual trace scope into a single trace scope by using the math function because you're add channel one to add channel two and then you're go ahead and invert channel two and you're also going to go ahead and compensate for the deflection and stuff like that so effectively you'll be able to take a measurement of a split phase system now I might do a separate video exactly how to do that once I add 240 volts to this actual lab because I am planning on installing 240 volts so that way I can run my heat plates and stuff like that and then I'll go ahead and show you how to measure it live with the oscilloscope but for now we're covered the US which is how do you do a 120 volt system and thankfully it's actually pretty easy you effectively got to make your probe look like this where you got to remove the ground off the probe itself so you don't want to leave it connected and just leave it disconnected hanging because you could effectively touch ground while you're doing your measurement and that of course could cause a dead short or a ground loop which you don't want neither so don't do that actually move it all the way with the tektronic probes it's pretty easy you just unscrew this here and once you unscrew this here you can slide this here out and it's gonna be because it got to get past the screw thing here all right and then you can slide that out and then you can put the plastic protector right here back on there okay now the other thing to note too is check the front end of your scope see what the maximum amount of voltage is you don't want to use it in 1x mode and then you go ahead, let's say, put 240 volts RMS through the oscilloscope because you're going to blow the front end of your scope and stuff like that. So you always want to check the maximum weighting of the front end of the oscilloscope and make sure that it can actually handle the, the voltage you're putting onto it. Now, you can use a 10x probe, and then they, of course, got probes that go up to 1000x and stuff like that. Make sure, depending on how high the voltage that you're actually measuring that the end of the probe itself where it connects to the front end is not exceeding the maximum amount of voltage that the oscilloscope can actually handle because you can also blow the front end of your oscilloscope and stuff. Now, one thing I want to note on these Chinese probes, because I actually had someone do this, 
and you got these cheap Chinese problem. You see how they got a switchable 1X and 10X? I accidentally had people where they thought that they were in 10X mode accidentally push it to 1X mode. They made their measurements and then they destroyed the front end of the oscilloscope. So normally I don't recommend you get a switchable probe and actually get a probe that's actually 10X itself and only 10X. Therefore, you're not risking, you know, blowing the front end of your scope if you accidentally hit that switch or forget to put it in 10x and then you blow the front end of your oscilloscope and now you got a paperweight essentially so here i'm using an actual 10x probe and how it identifies and how the oscilloscope identifies as 10x is there's this pin right here so when you connect it the oscilloscope knows that you're using a 10x probe therefore allowing you the higher voltage ranges and stuff of the oscilloscope itself and like i said Make sure, depending on the voltage, if you're measuring very high voltages and stuff like that, that you're using a proper high voltage probe, obviously. And two, that the resistor divider itself is going to be able to step down that voltage enough to where it divides it enough where it's not seeing and exceeding the maximum input voltage of your oscilloscope itself. Because if you don't, you can blow the front end of your oscilloscope too that way. Now I do have this set up and we're just going to go ahead and measure mains. We're going to go on the L and we're going to measure 120 volts AC. And there you go. And you can see there we got 117 volts and it's uh, jumping around 59 to 60 hertz right there because this is US. And all you got to do is just connect the tip end to your live. So we're going to go right here to the live right there. And here, let me go ahead and get it in. And you can see right there, there, and that's pretty much all I'm doing in the US. Now, in the UK, where you're dealing, or if you're even in the US too, if you're dealing with like L1 and L2, where it's split phase 180 degrees apart, you want to go to the math function of the oscilloscope, and you're effectively going to add channel 1 and channel 2. You use two separate probe and then you got invert channel two. So one's going this way and one's going this way here. So when you're measuring the sine wave, you actually see a sine wave. And it's pretty easy. Now, with handheld scopes, it's easier with 120 volt because you can measure directly because, you know, it's not plugged into the wall. As long as you don't got it plugged into the wall and computer, you got to be careful with some of these scopes because... On the cheaper scopes, or now I won't say necessarily cheaper, even on the expensive ones, they actually can share the same ground on the BNC here. Even though you see this plastic here, if you look in there, there's actually metal that goes into there and stuff like that. And if you go and try to measure a split face, it's a, you can effectively cause a dead short. So you want to make sure that if you're doing that, you... Do the same thing you remove the ground pin now 120 volts it's not a problem as long as you got it operating on battery and nothing plugged into the oscilloscope you can safely measure you know 120 volts no problem now they do got what you call truly isolated scope where the channels itself where the grounding is actually not physically connected to each other and therefore now you can actually measure you know split phase system you can measure motor controllers and everything else as it's switching and stuff and you don't got to worry about blowing the ground plane on the oscilloscope itself because i believe it or not i have actually seen engineers blow the front end of the oscilloscope and of course when i go look at it the whole front end's been vaporized because the motor switched over and when as the motor switch is obviously switching from ground to you know live or ground to battery power and stuff like depending on if you're doing ac dc and they end up blowing the actual ground plane on the oscilloscope itself so make sure if you're doing those type of measures it's probably better that you get a truly isolated scope like you know flute scope meter or the tektronics where it actually and it states that it's truly isolated and another way you can do is just with you know a multimeter you can actually measure the ground and see if it's actually connected to each other and of course make sure that the oscilloscope itself is not plugged into the wall or to your computer because some scope even the usb ports not isolate where they're not using optocoupler and therefore it's reference to ground and you could potentially you know cause damage to yourself or the equipment that you're actually testing 
But there you go, I kind of went over pretty much how you measure it when I do get 240 volts in the shop because I am having, I brought some heat plates and stuff that I do reflowing and stuff like that. I'm going to run them off 240 volts. So once I get the 240 volt system, I'll actually do a separate video on how you use the math functions of the oscilloscope to actually be able to measure a split phase system and so forth. So this concludes the video. One thing I want to go over that I forgot to go over is if you're using a probe without an identifier pin and a scope that doesn't do the automatic detection of the probe you're using where it's just a BNC connector only, you want to make sure that you set up the oscilloscope itself so you get an accurate measurement to the probe that you're actually using depending on the resistor value. It could be a 10x, it could be a 100x or a 1000x. You know, you go ahead and go into the menu of the scope itself. So we'll go into the channel menu here. And then you see right there where it says probe there. And you're just going to select what probe you're actually using. So if you're using a 10x probe, you set it to 10x. If you're using a 100x, you send it to 100x. If you're using a 1000x, you set it to a 1000x. And then, I can't stress this enough, make sure you do not exceed the input voltage of the oscilloscope itself. Otherwise, you will damage the oscilloscope.